is pulse pressure. Pulse pressure is the difference between our systolic blood pressure when heart muscle contract to pump blood out and diastolic blood pressure when heart muscle relax. It is measured in millimeters of mercury and represents the force that the heart generates each time it contracts. Systolic blood pressure is the value of the force our heart exerts on the wall of our arteries each time it beats. While Diastolic blood pressure is the value of the force our heart exits on the walls of our arteries in between beats. For humans, systolic and diastolic blood pressure are measured by using sphygmomanometer. manometer. Hence, the calculation of pulse pressure can be made, which is systolic blood pressure minus the diastolic blood pressure and we get the pulse pressure. For example, if your systolic blood pressure is measured as 110 mm mercury and your diastolic blood pressure is measured as 80 mm mercury, then your pulse pressure will be 30 mm mercury. In addition, range of human's pulse pressure are as followed. Athlete often to have lower resting heart rate. A low resting heart rate is a classical finding in enduring athletes. There is a large body of evidence that regular aerobic conditioning not only reduces brachial blood pressure but also decreases aortic stiffness. In addition, our resting heart rate is best measured when we are setting or lying down and we are in a calm state. The average resting heart rate is usually between 60 and 80 blood per minute. But for a healthy athlete, they may have a heart rate of 30 to 40 blood per minute. Lauren et al. study aortic pulse wave velocity, radial and carotid tonometry and Pulse with analysis in 30 endurance athletes and 30 sedentary controls match for age, high and brachial, cytolic and diastolic blood pressure. As expected for similar brachial blood pressure, resting heart rate was lower in athletes than in controls. However, athletes had distinctly higher carotid systolic blood pressure and pulse pressure why an athlete have low pulse pressure firstly an athlete's resting heart rate may be considered low when compared to the other a young healthy athlete may have a heart rate of 30 to 40 blood per minute when cardiovascular fitness of an athlete increases, it can cause physical change in the structure of the heart. That's likely because exercise strengthens the heart muscles. Secondly, it also allows it to pump a greater amount of blood with each heartbeat. Thus, more oxygen will enter the muscles. That also can increase efficiency means an athlete's resting heart rate falls to a level that could indicate trouble in a non-athlete. Thirdly, however, an athlete's heart rate may go up to 180 blood per minute to 200 blood per minute during exercise. In addition, Resting heart rates vary for everyone including athletes itself. Some factors that could influence it include as followed. In conclusion, an athlete have a low pulse pressure rate because there will be more oxygen going in the muscle. So, athlete's heartbeat will be more fuel.
not even a mashed potato, but a couch potato. Oh yeah, it's true. I am a couch potato. My favorite place to slush is on the couch. I spend all my free time sitting in this exact spot while watching television. The lifestyle of the couch potato is quite unhealthy for a human. 90% of couch potato does not like to exercise. Furthermore, they love to lay down and be lazy for an entire day. They even do not like to move around and break a sweat. Even though they love their lifestyle, it is scientifically proven that the couch potato lifestyle is dangerous for an average human like us. Based on their lifestyle, their pulse rate will be higher than a normal range of pulse rate. This is because they do not exercise TV. regularly and just slush is on the couch. Thus, they tend to have more cholesterol. This excessive cholesterol might build up a wall in the arteries and it will cause the arteries to become narrow than usual. When the arteries become narrow, it will cause the increasing in the blood pressure. So let's keep active and don't be a couch potato. The effect of being a couch potato. First, it will increase the risk of obesity and more than 30 other chronic illnesses. Inactivity has also been found to increase markers of heart disease. This activity imbalance can cancel out many of the positive effects of exercising such as blood sugar control and better blood flow to the legs and brain. Being inactive for just 4 to 6 hours can cause an enzyme that helps the body use fat to make energy to drop. A recent study found that men who reported spending 2 hours or more per day in front of the television had twice the risk of a heart attack or cardiac event than men who reported watching less television. Second, new research has found that preadipocyte cells, which are fat cell precursors, turn into fat cells more quickly and create even more fat when you lie down or sit down. These long periods of sitting or resting horizontally, where we put weight on parts of our bodies, are referred to as times of mechanical stretching loads. The cells themselves become larger and less efficient. This puts pressure on your body's cells, causes fat cells to spread out and grow bigger. Third, immediately after sitting, your calorie burning rate drops 1 calorie per minute while you sit. This means that if you sit for an hour, you burned 60 calories that hour than if you were standing. If you stand 5 hours more each day instead of sit or lay, you can burn 300 more calories each day. Next, your muscles weaken as electrical activity within the muscles diminishes. If you are immobile and are sedentary, lay or sit for a 24-hour period, a 40% reduction in glucose uptake in insulin occurs, which can eventually cause and lead to type 2 diabetes. Last but not least, you will gain weight as your cells become more fatty. The body will increase plasma triglycerides, which are fatty molecules, LDL cholesterol, known as bad cholesterol, and insulin resistance which means your body begins to produce more insulin because your body no longer accepts your insulin which stresses your liver and pancreas. 
in conclusion, no matter how active you are, it is very important to try to be less of a couch potato or an active couch potato. So, please do not forget to also interrupt your sitting with a few minutes of walking throughout the day. How to maintain a normal pass pressure? A normal pass pressure is in the range between 40 mm mercury to 60 mm mercury. If a person has pass pressure higher than 60 mm mercury, that person will be considered on a high pass pressure or wide pass pressure. On the other hand, if a person has pass pressure lower than 40 mm mercury, the person will be considered possess a low pass pressure or narrow pass pressure. As mentioned before, it is not normal to possess pass pressure higher than 60 mm mercury. But what are the causes of high pass pressure? There are several causes like aortic regurgitation, aortic stiffening, a severe iron deficiency anemia, and hypothyroidism. Aortic regurgitation is when the blood flows backward across aortic valve during ventricular diastole from the aorta into the left ventricle. The amount of blood pumped through the heart will be reduced. Hence, the heart needs to work harder to pump enough blood. So when the blood returns back, it leads to an increase of systolic pressure and decrease of diastolic pressure, which will result in high pass pressure. Aortic stiffening is when the elastic fiber within the arterial wall begin to fray due to mechanical stress. An iron deficiency is when our body lacks iron. With less iron, hemoglobin is unable to be produced. Hence, oxygen cannot bind with the red blood cell and our body with insufficient oxygen. Having a high pass pressure is not a good thing. It can cause a condition called atrial fibrillation. It is a condition when the heartbeat is irregular. It may bring up the risk to cut blood clots, stroke and heart attack. Having a low or narrow pass pressure is an abnormal thing. And it also has several causes like severe aortic stenosis, severe mitral regurgitation and hypovolemia. An aortic stenosis is when aortic valve becomes diseased. The valve leaflet becomes stiff and thickened, making it have a hard time opening and closing. This makes our heart need to work harder to pump more blood. A mitral regurgitation is when there is a leakage of blood through mitral valve each time the left ventricle contracts. A leaking mitral valve allows blood to flow in two directions during the contraction. Having a low pass pressure is not safe because it can decrease cardiac output leading to reduced blood flow to brain and vital organ. If the cardiac output is very low, it can damage our organ, especially our kidneys. How to treat? Most of the treatment of person with white pass pressure will be the same as treatment for lowering blood pressure. Firstly, they can be treated with changing lifestyle. If the person with high pass pressure are an overweight, they are advised to lose some weight because it can lower their blood pressure. The patient will be advised to exercise regularly. If the patient are a smoker, they need to stop smoking because smoking can harden arteries, therefore the pass pressure will be increased. In a nutshell, a resting couch potato would have a higher pulse pressure than a resting athlete. For future recommendations, there are many ways to keep the pulse pressure to be normal. First and foremost, exercise regularly is the most important things. That's all from us. Thank you for listening.